Hi everyone. In this video, I am going to teach you about purchasing and capitalizing inventory in a perpetual inventory system. So let's take a look. All right. First thing we need to discuss, the idea of cost of goods purchased. So when you buy inventory as a company um, in a perpetual inventory system, you are paying a certain amount for those goods. And in accounting, we generally refer to that as the cost of goods purchased. Now, you do not expense those purchases at the time of purchase. If you think about it, what you're doing when you make one of those purchases is you've got cash going down because you've spent money for the purchase and you've got inventory going up because you are receiving inventory. Now, cash is an asset, inventory is an asset. So really all you've done when you buy inventory is you've exchanged one asset for another. You haven't actually lost any value as a company, therefore you do not expense this. The idea of recording the value you spent for an asset as an asset is known as capitalization, okay? So it's recording an expenditure, so expenditure being outflow of cash, to an asset account, which will then be expensed at a later date. And there's a key reason we do this, to better align with revenues generated by the expenditure. So think about it. You're buying this inventory. If you're a merchandising company, you're buying inventory with the intent to resell it to a customer. You haven't lost value at the time of purchase, but when you sell this to the customer, that asset called inventory will go away and you'll get the revenue from making the sale. At that point, you'll go ahead and recognize the expense. At that point, um, you, 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 you get to line up uh, the expense of this purchase with the revenue generated from the sale to the customer. So when we talk about capitalizing, all costs associated with buying and acquiring the merchandising, the merchandise are allowed to be capitalized. And so that includes the actual price tag, so what you pay for it. It also includes any freight or insurance that you might have to pay for as part of obtaining. And so we're going to do an example where you get to see this at play. Here we have Walmart purchases 3,800 worth of canned goods on account from Green Giant, okay? So it says here Walmart is purchasing 3,800 worth of canned goods. So Walmart is a merchandiser. They sell products. So those canned goods are their inventory. So Walmart's got inventory going up or a debit to inventory. So inventory 3,800. And it says that they are buying them on account. So they're agreeing to pay later. We call that accounts payable. That's a liability also going up. So that's a credit, AP 3800. So this is the journal entry that Walmart would record when it buys the canned goods from Green Giant. Inventory up, it owes money. Now later on when it pays for what it owes, it'll be AP down, cash down, right? Because it's paying off the liability. But you could interchange this. If Walmart paid with cash, then this would just be cash. Okay, but in this case, they didn't pay with cash. So this is an idea of capitalizing. The $3,800 expenditure outflow of cash got capitalized to the inventory account. Now, notice I don't have a date on here, and that's because I want to talk about timing. Timing of making this entry is going to depend on the shipping terms associated with the purchase. Okay, and there's two shipping terms you might see, FOB shipping point, FOB destination. Now, first of all, let's establish FOB. What does this mean? It stands for free on board. Do you need to know that? Nope. Does it matter? Nope. What matters is, do you know what it means to be free on board shipping point or free on point destination? And basically what this means is free on board shipping point is that the legal title of the inventory changes hands upon shipment, okay? And as you may guess then by that definition, FOB destination simply means legal title of the inventory changes hands upon arriving at destination. So if we think about a, 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 a kind of a, a road between two businesses, so let's say here Walmart is over here, and Green Giant is over here. What we have is between these two businesses, we have a truck, a plane, a boat, whatever it is. Mine's going to be a very poorly drawn truck or steer wheel. And this truck is going this way, right? It's carrying the goods from Green Giant to Walmart. The question is, 
who has legal title or ownership of those goods while it's on the truck. And that comes down to these standards or these shipping terms and when that journal entry gets recorded. So this journal entry right here essentially says Walmart now has inventory. Well, if it's FOB shipping point, Walmart will record this journal entry right here when the truck leaves Green Giant, when it leaves its shipping point. At that point, Walmart owns the goods. It records this journal entry. It owns the goods while it's on the truck. And if something happens to, those truck, to that truck, Walmart is on the hook. Okay. On the other hand, if it's FOB destination, Walmart would not record this journal entry until the truck arrives here at Walmart which means the entire time the goods are on the truck, they belong to Green Giant. Something happens to the goods, Green Giant's on the hook, right? And these are contract terms that are established when the purchase is made, but it matters for accounting because it matters on when do you record the transfer of ownership and therefore put the inventory on the balance sheet of the company that owns it, okay? Now, that was purchasing inventory. I said it was $3,800 worth of inventory. That was the price you paid. What if Walmart also paid for shipping? Well, it's no different. Here we say Walmart's purchase from Green Giant is FOB shipping point with a 150 freight charge payable in cash. So in that case, Walmart is going to record a journal entry that says debit inventory credit cash 150. Now you're going, wait a minute, it's a freight charge. Why is it not like freight expense or something like that? Well, remember, you're allowed to capitalize the cost of getting that inventory to the inventory account. So even the freight charges simply make the value of your inventory go up. Notice, not the quantity. The quantity of inventory you're buying has not changed. But the value of it is higher because it costs you extra to get it because you had to pay this shipping to get it in. Now I have at the bottom here, it says, what about FOB destination with freight paid by the seller? When a seller pays freight, in this case, if Green Giant paid freight, Walmart wouldn't record this journal entry because Walmart didn't spend any additional money to get the inventory. Therefore, Walmart would only record the $3,800 tag and, and that would be it, okay? Now, you might also notice that I paired up FOB shipping point with Walmart um, paying the freight, and I did FOB destination with uh, Green Giant paying the freight. Um, that is just kind of standard. What you'll typically see is whoever owns it while it's on the truck, the plane, the boat, whatever the case may be, they're the ones that are usually paying for that mode of transportation. So that's why I have here, if it was Walmart owns it while it's on the truck, right? Walmart was paying the freight. If Green Giant owns it while it's on the truck, Green Giant was paying the freight in this case. All right, that's it for capitalizing the cost of goods purchased. Um, hope you found this helpful. Hope you join me for another video.